Grandma's Grandma's kitchen. kitchen. There's a fiddle tune and a wooden spoon while she's stirring and singing. There's friends leaving our family land and then the phone's usually ringing. No matter who you are or what you've done, everything's forgiven. Thank God. Thank God. Thank God. Grandma's kitchen. And ain't it good to be in Grandma's kitchen? Hello everybody, Mary Janet here from Tunes and Wooden Spoons and welcome to my little kitchen here in Port Hood, Cape Breton Island, Nova Scotia. Anyway, we're going to have a wonderful day today. This is kind of um, what I'm making today is um, curds pancakes. That's what I call them. And I am making a custard to go on top of them. And also, I am going to be making a homemade pancake syrup. I decided to add the syrup today is because today, March 28th, happens to be Mama's birthday. God bless Mama. She is the lady who was my grand aunt who raised me. And today would have been her birthday. She was born in 1902. And she was well into her 50s when she took me in. And she used to make this warm brown sugar sauce for uh, any time that we would have had pancakes or uh, French toast, which was rare, which was rare. But she always had a, had a, an, an ability to, to come up with something at the last minute. And so I thought, oh my gosh. I do have my maple syrup on hand, but I also thought I'm going to make this because I used to make the maple syrup or the uh, the pancake syrup when uh, my kids were little. And sometimes you just, you know, you just couldn't afford to buy the pancake syrup or you just didn't have it in. And I would make uh, mama sauce and serve it warm and it was just fine. And the children kind of enjoyed that. So hello to everybody out there and thank you for joining in today and uh, we're going to have a great uh, afternoon of entertainment here. I'm so excited. Uh, they were here, they've been playing for the last half an hour and now they've moved downstairs into the family room. So you might hear little swirls of uh, some fiddle coming up the stairs, I'm not sure. But that is Morgan Tony uh, from the Wagmat Cook um, community here on Cape Breton Island and I want to give a special shout out to his mom Jackie Tony. Hi Jackie I know that you are uh, presently in the hospital I would have loved if you had could have come to visit. Uh, dear Jackie is dealing with uh, cancer and um, we just wish and hope the best for you uh, and uh, that it's, uh, you're getting along okay, and I appreciate that, uh, that uh, your, your son came to visit me today and, and instead of you, but he'll be there soon. I know he will. So anyway, um, today, like I said, we're going to be making um, these pancakes, and uh, I'm going to start uh, with, in the order that I like to make things when I'm, when I'm doing this. The reason I'm making this today instead of like baked goods or uh, or a soup or something like that is um, we were going to have an indigenous dish and I, I believe uh, Morgan's cousin Karen was just a little camera shy and whatever. But what they probably would have made would be the bannock that, uh, that was a traditional dish and is a traditional dish in, in their culture. And we have had a very similar uh, dishes uh, in the bonnock that we made but with Teresa and actually with the Irish soda bread S so similar in in uh, content so we just decided I would just do this and Morgan would entertain and he would talk a little bit about his culture which I'm so happy to hear 
So we're going to get right down to it and we're going to start uh, by, uh, I'm just going to wash my hands here very quickly and uh, we're going to start with the custard. Now today I put the recipe up a little early. I put it up at 1.30 because there's, you can make whatever you want from all of these recipes or just watch. That's totally up to you. And, um, and uh, anyway, let me go wash my hands. All right. I just I just want to say I just had such a great week. I, it, it was it was busy, but it was wonderful. The kids all went back after March break, and uh, plans are for some coming back for Easter. But uh, I also had a visit from my brother Don Alec and his wife Loretta, and uh, their daughter Don Beaton, the redheaded. Uh, fiddle player that you've been, you know already and, and it was just it was just it's and it's just so nice to get a visit from people we we need that in our lives so thank you for visiting me today <laughs> okay I'm going to turn the camera down we're going to start with a pot I think this one's a, a two two liter pot and uh, we're, we're going to make the custard first. And this custard is just fine if you, uh, if you want to have it just as a, as a little light dessert, a little uh, with some fruit on it, it's beautiful. But I like to serve it on pancakes. And a couple of the, the kids, uh, when they got married, on the Sunday following the wedding, they would have got married on Saturday, on the Sunday we would have immediate family and, and the bride or the groom's immediate family and, and friends that, were, that came for the wedding over to our house for brunch. And I don't know, maybe 30 people maybe or something like that. And so Cecil would look after the bacon and the, the hash brown casserole and, and uh, that sort of thing. And I did uh, actually w these kinds of waffles and um, with fruit and the custard. And it was, it's just a nice alternative. And sometimes there were children. And, and so I don't do it quite very, very often, but it's, it's always a nice treat. And uh, where I got the idea was... Um, Oh, now I can't remember the name of the restaurant that uh, that serves um, breakfasts. Wouldn't come to me. Should know that right off the bat. They're in Halifax or whatever. But they serve a waffle with with a custard on it and just load it down with uh, with fruit. So um, uh, I think you'll I think you'll like it if you give it a try. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna turn the camera down. Oh, hello, Darlene Turple. Holly Coras, you're right, Holly. Thank you, Coras. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna turn this down. All right, you can see my pot. Great. All right, we're gonna start um, with two tablespoons of cornstarch and one third cup of white sugar. And always when you're when you're you make putting cornstarch in something it's great to mix it up into the dry ingredients uh, so that it doesn't get lumpy if you add liquid because it tends to do that and two tablespoons Okay, we're just going to stir that up, just stir that up with a whisk. And the thing with this recipe, you need to have everything at the ready before you take it to the stove, okay? So this, this is the first part. And you're going to, into this, you're going to add the two cups of milk. Okay, I have two cups of milk. And just stir that up. All 
All right, now, before we put that on the stove, we're going to whisk our eggs and have them at the ready. These are, we get our eggs from our neighbor. Uh, the Sutherlands, they have a farm. And it's so nice to get these nice fresh eggs. And of course, there's a little bit of a shell. There we go. I better get some paper towel. Okay, and I'm just gonna whisk it with my little whisk here. You wanna make sure that they're really whisked well. Right, okay, uh, actually I might use this one when I'm making this. Okay, what else do I have here? We're going to need the vanilla over by the stove. So, two tablespoons of cornstarch, one third cup of white sugar, two cups of milk, two eggs whisked, and a teaspoon of vanilla. All right, okay, I'm gonna bring you over to the stove. Come with me. There. Okay. Now, here's my pot. So we're going to turn this on. I'm just going to turn it on medium heat. Make sure that the it, that the the sugar you're just feeling no grains at the bottom of the sh with the sugar or the cornstarch, but you don't want to mix too much. I'm just going to do that once because if you do stir a lot you'll get a lot of bubbles but the one thing you want to look for are the bubbles because you want to kind of bring this to a scald okay see if i can get this light on there we go <laughs> i'm reading the comments There. So you really, uh, when you know that, that it's scalded, say if you're scalding milk, you'll see the bubbles come all the way around the edge and you'll see some steam coming up. You do not want to uh, let it come to a boil. So, um, and just, if you have to stir, just stir very little so that it's just not scorching on the bottom or something like that. And, and really what I do, I'll, I'll touch it with my fingers so that I know that it's nice and hot. And you just have your eggs next to your stove and you have your vanilla and we'll all, we're all set. I just love that you guys are chatting with one another. That's awesome. <laughs> So 
So this Thursday, Kathy Mayhew, she was the one who, uh, who um, I'm going to be baking with her. Hi, Kathy. I just saw your name, Kathy McMillan. Kathy McMillan lives in Edmonton, and her daughter Amy is my son's girlfriend and beautiful people. Just beautiful people. And Amy just had a birthday this week. And speaking about birthdays, I guess you all know about how uh, our daughter Margie was the, uh, the one who suggested me making the cinnamon rolls. Well, her birthday is this Thursday on a no, and it's Friday, 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 April 2nd is her birthday. And um, so I'm just giving a shout out to Margie. Margie, I love you. Happy birthday this week. I'll be in touch. No doubt. There. Margie is um, called after my real mom who passed away so young. And um, my, my real mother was always called just, she, people referred to her as Margie. Although her name was Margaret, uh, she was uh, just referred to as, as uh, Okay, I think that this is ready. But she was always, so I, I just called Margie, Margie. Didn't even give her a second name, never called her Margaret, just Margie. I think this is just about ready. Now this is a really nice dessert dish as well. That's pretty near ready. Just watch that it doesn't boil. This, of course, is a Pamper Chef tool, which I love and I use all the time. I don't want to be blowing about Pamper Chef, but honestly, I just don't know what to do without it. So you can see around the edges all those bubbles happening. And I think that is just about it. What we want to do we're going to shut the heat off before we introduce the eggs. Okay. Okay. So, what you want to do now, I'm just going to stir that up a little bit. So, you're going to have your eggs, have your eggs all whisked and ready. I'm going to pour, a, see if I can get this so you can see it. I'm going to pour the hot stuff into the egg mixture. I don't know. Maybe, maybe a quarter cup or something like that. I really, I don't measure, so I don't know. Just a little bit like that. Which just introduces it to the eggs and warms up the whisked eggs. Okay. And now this is going to, I know we have some cornstarch in here, but the eggs are going to make it it's going to make it thick. So before you turn the heat back on, you're going to put a slow and steady stream of the egg mixture into the milk mixture. And if you if you see something that you haven't whisked, like a, a bit of egg, you know, like a, a bit of um, the white of an egg that didn't get whisked very well, you can always put it through a sieve. Okay. Now, we are going to turn that back on medium. This will only take probably one and a half minutes. I'm going to switch to a spatula. It's 
basically all you do and I like to serve this warm the warm syrup over your waffle or pancake really coming thick right now That's done. All right, and we're going to add our vanilla, about a teaspoon. And just mix that up. Now, if, if, if you make this, and you're not using it for the pancakes, and you put it in your uh, in a, a pitcher or whatever. I'm putting it in my my little measuring cup there, and when you put it in the fridge, it'll actually thicken up a bit more. So I'm going to put it in in a, a glass dish. going to put it in the fridge I'm going to just set it aside but what I am going to do I'm going to put a little bit of plastic wrap just down on the surface so that you don't get that skin on it by the time we go to eat it lay that right on the top Hello. <laughs> oh, Tammy's on here too. Hi, Tammy. And I think Gordy's on there too. I think there's a few of them, a few of my little stragglers are out there. <laughs> yes, when Tammy sa says hi, it's with tunes and wooden spoons because she's, she's, uh, has the rights to uh, answer lots of questions there too. So now we're going to make mama's syrup. And of course, I never measured. I just pour some brown sugar in, pour some water, uh, you know, and some cornstarch and mix it all together. But for you guys, I said, well, I, I better try and do this. Hi, Tricia from Calgary. Hi. So, um, <laughs> but you know what? It really is. It is easy if you just take it slow one thing about the um, <laughs> one one thing about the custard it really you have to have a good spatula and and um, you know it, it'll scorch on the bottom if you have it on anything higher than a medium a medium heat um, okay so now I'm going to just make the uh, the homemade brown sugar sauce just for mama in mama's memory and uh, if you're ever stuck for pancake syrup, oh, the kids, don't you know, they'll know the difference. But tell them to be brave and to, to do it anyway. And it's it's nice. And it's really nice served warm. And really, this this pancake or, or waffle, however you're making it, uh, you really don't need any syrup at all on it when you put the custard and the fruit on it. But I know from my own grandchildren, they'll, you know, say no to the fruit and the custard and they just want the syrup on it, okay? How come I didn't put any custard in it? I'm not sure what you mean. I am making custard. I know you can probably purchase custard powder, but this is, this is custard from scratch. 
<laughs> All right. Hi, Charmaine. Oh, that's wonderful. Oh, really? Her mother, Margie, was April 2nd as well. Okay. All right. All right. I'm going to put it down and we're going to go to the syrup. All right. Okay. So the syrup, let me find it here. One cup of brown sugar and a cup of water and one and a half tablespoons of cornstarch and some vanilla and butter. All right, so we're gonna start with the brown sugar. The reason we're starting with the brown sugar is because we wanna mix the cornstarch in with the sugar so that we don't um, run into anything there. So one cup, I'm using my half cup measure here. sugar. And uh, one and a half tablespoons of cornstarch. So you just mix that together before you add the water. And yes, I see somebody, uh, you know, you could use caramel sauce. You could use your gingerbread sauce. Absolutely, you can do that. This is just, I'm just doing this just as, as a little aside and just so that I can do it in memory of Mama. Maggie Ann was her name. She had many names. She was called Maggie Ann, Margaret Ann, Peg, and Mabu Grandma. When the grandkids are coming along. Okay, lots of lumps out of there. And I'm going to add to that just a cup of cold water. And you're going to turn the heat on. Medium high, I would say. And I have a about a teaspoon of butter at the ready when this is done and my vanilla is close by. You're just gonna bring it to a bowl and it'll kind of slightly thicken. And uh, you can dilute the cornstarch into a little bit of water and add it in to, to the, the liquid. Or you could just add the cornstarch to the brown sugar, which is just fine. So I don't know what I put on the, uh, on the recipe, but either or is fine. And, and you'll see that this is rather cloudy and it will be like that. And yeah, you could add maple flavoring as well, for, for sure. And I have maple flavoring, thanks to my Watkins girl, Josephine.
So people, everybody ready for spring? Are you looking at just what that is going to bring? All of these vaccines are coming closer and closer to us. I think Nova Scotia, we're a little bit behind to the rest of Canada and and rest of the world, really. But uh, our cases have been so um, small that, that that's probably the reason why. But um, I can't wait to get mine. I'm definitely going to get mine. Ready for spring. I guess we are for sure. Uh, the, uh, there was one day there. I don't know. Um, we did have some snow this week and there's some more dirt as we call it on the way but uh the sun was streaming through the windows oh my god it, it almost made me go outside and start cleaning my windows from the outside all the things that blew up against it during during the winter but it takes the sunshine to 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 make you get in the mood for cleaning okay I don't know if you guys can hear some of that music. Lots of people have had their shots already. That's awesome. Okay. Have my trusty pot on the stove with lots of chili in there a lot of it's going in the freezer though because we're just going we're going out for supper so you can see it's becoming clear That means it's done. Okay, you just make it, let it come to a full boil. Now, we're just going to add about a teaspoon or more of butter there, whatever you want. A little bit of vanilla. And just stir that around until it is melted. The butter is melted. Oh yeah. Gosh, just some vanilla and butter just make everything. Now I'm just going to add it to this little pitcher. And I'll put it over with the custard. And I already have, my blueberries are already there and I cut up some strawberries so we'll have that ready as well. So now, let's get going to the curd pancakes. <laughs> you know what? You're all chatting on there like we really are having a visit. Talking about the weather, talking about the vaccine. And isn't it great to have like a little group like this? I'd love you guys. Yes, so many people are high risk. Okay, let's do this. Okay, I'm gonna take you back to the table. Ah. 
I know, it's the best group. I love you all. I just love you all. Okay. So, we're going to make the... Um, now, I have my recipe in front of me for this. Don't make this that often so it's not like... Like cottage cheese. We never called it cottage cheese when we were growing up. It was always called curds, just curds. And uh, some people just don't recognize that name. What, what do you mean curds? Well, that's cottage cheese. <laughs> Thank you, I love you too, Michelle. <laughs> and, uh, <clears throat> but this was just a, a different recipe I found online many, many years ago. Hi in Windsor, Ontario, Mary Frances. What is the make of the pot? Uh, all my pots are, are Paderno and they're old, but Paderno, I think what came out of PEI, I think that, that was, a, it was a, a, a fairly local company and it's, it's a great, great pots and pans. I have actually, I have an original set that I got of Paderno and then I got a second set of Paderno and I love them. Yeah. Oh, I know. Had, I love to have curds and boiled potatoes cut open, put some butter on it. Just, I love that. Potatoes and curds. Donna Park. Hi, Donna. <laughs> that is Cecil's niece in Fort McMurray. Okay, I better get on to the baking, right? And then the music. So, I am going to start with the curds and fine curds. So I'm just gonna, what I'll do is, uh, you need one cup of the, of the curds. So I'm gonna go get the kind of curds that I buy. Locally, uh, you know, this is a dairy, Scottsburn dairy. And these, this green uh, is, is, they call it lasagna curds. And um, they did change it in the last year or so. And, uh, but it, it's, it's so f similar uh, to the ricotta cheese consistency. It, it isn't a large curd at all. It's, it's just like really, that's what it looks like. And if you don't, if you don't have that from your dairy, that, uh, you know, at your supermarket, just take the large curds one and just squash them with the fork. Yeah, okay. They're, they're really good, Tina. They're very good curds and I, I just love them. They're more like the ones we used to have when we were growing up. So anyway, we're gonna start with one cup of them. I'm gonna turn the camera down. There. You can see me now. Okay. So, one cup of, of curds. Oh, I forgot to do something. So right now, I am going to, I have, a, I'm going to use my griddle. I'm, I'm going to bring you over here. Show you what I'm going to be using. I'm, I'm just, I have a, uh, this kind of a griddle. This, this actually is Gordy's and he left it home. And I'm gonna turn that on. And I'm also gonna turn on my waffle iron. I'm going to um, do a couple of things there. So uh, mine is set on 350 if you have a griddle, electric griddle. And uh, I'm just gonna let that heat up while we're mixing the batter. And you're going to need some butter it's non-stick, but I really like to have a little spray of this. And I'm going to have a, a quarter cup measure for that much batter I'm going to put in. And with my waff, this is my waffle iron. It's as old as the hill, so forgive me if it looks terrible, but this is it. It's a big round one. And this came with it, and it's about a half a cup that you need to fill that space. 
We're going to do want some of each, okay? All right. So let me see. Okay. So the, the, the one cup of the cottage cheese. And we're going to separate the eggs. So you're going to have three eggs. I'm going to put, um, I'm, we're going to be beating up the egg whites. So I'm going to, uh, my deep glass bowl here, I'm going to put that in there. And don't get any egg white into that. And I'm going to put my egg yolks there. All right. I'm just feeling a little disorganized here. I got started talking about the curds. And I jumped ahead of myself. But we'll catch up. Okay. Yeah, but I think I started telling you before uh, about, I got this recipe online one time. Of course, I saw that it used curds and that attracted me to it. Okay, we'll put the egg whites aside. I need some more paper towel. All right. So we separated our eggs and we're going to combine the egg yolks with the cottage cheese and the flour, sugar, salt, and the cinnamon if you want. And I need another spatula. So I'm just going to put the egg yolks in there. I could have put the egg yolks right in there and I'm just going to mix that up. Okay, and what else is going in there? Flour, how much flour? One third cup of flour. And this is my one third measure. A tablespoon of white sugar. Just using a teaspoon measure and I'm just guessing at that so two and a half teaspoons or so and a dash of salt okay and a dash of cinnamon if you have cinnamon great add that probably didn't tell you about that just like that and you're going to mix that up Now you're going to beat the egg whites and we're going to be folding that in there shortly. Hold on. Here's your egg whites. And I will use a little bit of cream of tartar if you have it. If you don't, don't worry about it. And 
just when it gets kind of foamy, you add a little sprinkle of cream of tartar. Now, um, okay, where is my whisk? So the recipe says remove about a third of the egg whites and whisk into the egg yolk batter. Okay, so we're going to do that. put the rest of the egg yolks in. And I'm just going to fold that in until just combined. You don't want to mix it and stir it a lot because you want the the egg whites will make it nice and raise up and be more fluffy okay Perfect. I think that's good. Until you can't see any more egg whites. Okay, I'm gonna, I'm, you need a tablespoon here. And I'm going to take you over to the griddle. Which is nice and hot. Can you see that? All right. Hi, just checking on you. Make sure you're okay. And, uh, Buttermilk. God, yes. I used to churn the butter. Didn't do a lot of it, but the churning of the butter, uh, uh, churning the, the, the cream and the milk that made the butter, and the butter would float to the top, and then you take the butter milk off, and then the rest of the homemade butter would, uh, Mama would add salt to it, and then she'd put it in this, what we called crocks, and would save it in the cellar. And uh, now those crocs are like, everybody loves them. 
Okay, we're just about ready to put these pancakes on here. So I'm going to just spray a little bit here. And I'm also going to turn my kettle on. And these take about seven minutes to cook and then I'll put it together and then we're gonna have some music. So on my waffle iron, I'm just gonna spray that bottom and top. All right. Can you see that? I don't know if you can see. You see my griddle? The words are in my way. I don't think you can. There. Okay, I'll have to change that. There, that's better. So, a, you know, about a quarter cup. This is a little quarter cup measure. You can tell just by the lightness of the batter that they're going to be nice and fluffy. Okay, I'm just going to set that aside. And I'm going to take some and put in my waffle. turns green it's ready now you have to get your this little spatula ready and usually when uh, the indicator for uh, pancakes that are ready to turn is you get you know those little bubbles on the top well I'm not sure you're going to to see that. I think you just have to kind of take a peek underneath and you'll know when you're ready. Probably should have timed it a little bit. There now. There now. How's everybody? Are y'all ready for Easter? Easter's coming. Uh, we're gonna have little Rosie back for Easter weekend, for Friday and Saturday anyway, maybe not on Sunday. Uh, <laughs> wouldn't I love to have you here for cleanup? That would be great. I usually try to clean up as I go, but of course, sometimes when you're making multiple stuff like this, it just doesn't work that way. But I'd love to have, have a visit. Hi, Marguerite Beaton. It really crept up fast. It really, really did. Okay, I'm just going to check these now. Let's have a look. I always go to the first one. It feels like it might be done on the other side. on this waffle and it's nicely done here's the waffle all right I'm I'm going to go ahead and dress this up so 
I have my custard. I'll take off. So I'm just going to put custard is still pretty warm and that's just fine. We're going to spill some on the top. And some blueberries. Some strawberries. I've cut up a little few strawberries. And I'm going to put a little bit of syrup on there. The homemade syrup. And I think a little shake of powdered sugar. Just a minute now. No, I didn't do that. Very good. I think this is pampered. It is pampered chef. <laughs> Everything I have is pampered chef. And just sprinkle some powdered sugar on that. And a little cinnamon. People can dress up their own. It looks it looks so nice and it smells so good. Okay, let me check the others. Yes. Put these aside on another plate. And I'm going to unplug everything. There. I'll put that there. And on here, we're going to put our custard. You don't need a lot. A few blueberries. But I was talking to Morgan Tony and he was saying, you know, so much of the, you, you lived off the land, especially his culture as well. And berries were a, a big source of uh, the diet as well. And you'd put that in, in the food that you were making and just a little spill of the homemade syrup. But they as well would have the uh, their maple syrup and sprinkle cinnamon, sprinkle of powdered sugar. And there, it's a nice little brunch item, isn't it? And you can have all kinds of nice, load it up with whatever, whatever you want. It's just, it's a, it's a really, uh, good idea, and especially if you're entertaining children. Now, I was just going to tell you something else there. Um, maple syrup. Just a little, a couple of little facts in case you didn't know that about maple syrup and about honey. That um, maple syrup, uh, once you open it and have it in the fridge, it's good for about four months. If, you, if it's an unopened maple syrup uh, bottle, it'll last, it'll last up to a year. And, but you can, it'll also, if you have it open and you wanna put it in your freezer, even though it's been open, have it in your freezer and it'll last up to a year and it doesn't freeze. Real maple syrup does not freeze. So um, just a little thing about that. And also, um, Honey, so, so many people are, uh, when you have honey and it doesn't go bad, honey doesn't go bad. You can have it at room temperature, you can have it in your fridge, but sometimes it'll it'll turn and into back into crystally stuff. And you know what? Some people just throw it away. Don't do that. Put, just put some boiling water in a pot 
and set your container of honey in the in the water and it'll all come back to its natural honey look and it'll it's fine it doesn't go bad um, okay so I think I'm gonna put the tea on and I'm gonna get these fellas out of, they're having a ball down there in the uh, in the family room <laughs> as musicians do um, so I'm gonna bring you over here and I'll take the legs down and I'll give them a call because they've been wanting to to get together hello down there Come on up. Yay. <laughs> Hi. And look, there's Mary Beth Cardi. How's it going, internet land? <laughs> Cooking, baking, fun times. Hey. Fun times. And here comes Bradley Murphy. Hi. <laughs> and here's the star of the Hi. show, Morgan Tony. We are here. <laughs> I'm gonna get this uh, these legs let down. Oh my gosh, it's so high tech. Oh yeah, Look at all the <laughs> you're, you're magic. Who is watching? Ah, <laughs> only 500 people. There's Hi, 655. Wow. Okay, one more leg, people, to let down, sorry. Well, I'm on a tilt here. This is the fun part. <laughs> so, I want to introduce you. How's that, people? That's good. That's good. Yeah. yeah, okay. Can see everybody? All right. So, again, Mary Beth Cardi, multi-talented musician, singer, guitar player, God knows everything she does. It's magic. <laughs> Bradley, I, I I haven't known Bradley, but I do know that he is a Gaelic speaker, learner, teacher of music in the Shetty Camp area, formerly from the Myra area. East Bay. In East <coughs> Bay. East Bay. And the star today, <laughs> Mr. Morgan Tony. And Morgan has it astonishes me that he has only taken the fiddle up two years ago. He is a student of music at Cape Breton University here in Cape Breton Island over in Sydney. His teacher was Stan Chapman. Stan can, uh, to his credit, he has uh, so many students who have just gone on to be amazing musicians. And here's one more. Morgan, I know, has been uh, on Celtic Colors, and he and I have communicated, and I've been listening to his music, and uh, he is uh, Mi'kmaq, and he lives on the Wagmat Cook uh, community uh, in Victoria County, I guess, yes. And uh, his, uh, again, we said hello to your mom, Jackie, nice. already, and she's supposed to be watching today from the hospital. And uh, Morgan is just an amazing fiddle player, and he also sings um, cultural songs from, from the Mi'kmaq people. And uh, we are deeply uh, grateful to the Mi'kmaq people from here because they were here first, and uh, they come under the First Nations umbrella, the Mi'kmaq people, and uh, they made way for their... Uh, all of us, the Scottish descendants that came over uh, later. And uh, we'll, we'll talk a little bit to Morgan a little later about uh, just about his culture, because I know a lot of people have messaged me and uh, very interested in, in the culture. So we're going to turn it over to them, and I hope you enjoy every single sound that you hear. And I will say this, uh, after the show was over, 
uh, there's a GoFundMe page uh, that that Morgan has, and Tammy is going to post that for anyone who would like to donate uh, to that cause. And anybody who donates, I think it's $20, will will be able to download his music as well, uh, and that that's included in that donation. He may have already reached his uh, the ceiling that he had uh, put up there, but... I'm so thankful that he's here and he's brought his friends and you know what? These musicians have been hurting this past year and whatever we can give and share, isn't it wonderful to do that? So thank you ahead of time. So take it away and feel free to introduce every tune you're going to play. That's, that's interesting for everybody too. Sure. So, huh? <laughs> this first one is, um, what would you call it? We're blending, you know. Yeah, blending two languages. Blending two languages. The Mi'kmaq and the Gaelic language. Do you have a name for it? Oh, Gitbu. Gitbu, yeah. First one. And then. And uh, where's that song? That was written by someone you know. And, and you can speak yeah. speak loudly because I have a <clears throat> microphone just so they you can hear that. Huh? Okay, we're going to do a medley, and the first song is uh, in Mi'kmaq, and it's called Gitbu, which means eagle. Eagle. Yeah. Eagle? yeah. Yeah. And uh, I've been told that the composer is George Paul, but I'm not 100% sure on that. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, we heard it this summer. We sang it this summer in uh, Eskasoni. Eskasoni. Yeah. As part of a big outdoor show. And the second song is Bonian Downus Boyfia, and it's a song uh, recorded from the North Shore singers. Um, I learned it from a recording. And then I think we're going to play another medley of fiddle tunes after that. Hope you enjoy. <clears throat>
Keep you posted when that one comes out. Yeah, that's our first time doing those two songs together. We, we just came up with that in your basement. <laughs> oh my god, see? I love that. It's magic. Isn't that awesome? They're all saying awesome, awesome. Nice. <laughs> that's beautiful. Well, you guys take it away, mm -hmm. and then maybe after the next one, we'll have a chat. Okay, sounds good. <laughs>
That's awesome. I'll clap. I know you guys are all doing that clapping. I know you are. And I know there's a couple there that always dance around the kitchen when we have music on. So they're probably doing that too. And I think they're up in Ontario. Hello there. Great music. Yeah, that, that's a common error that some watchers have. I'll, uh, so far, every single guest I have is right-handed. Nobody here is left-handed, correct? Correct. Some people think because the way I take the video, it's mirrored. Oh, yeah. And oh, looks yeah. like there are all these left-handed players that I'm having on the show. <laughs> a lefty or southpaw had commented a couple weeks ago, and I say, well, no. That is really, you know, you know you're really looking closely and watching closely, and you know fiddle music <laughs> when... Yeah, and you notice you're things like that. The <laughs> yes, I see. I feel like I'm in Bradley's way there. I can move. <laughs> <laughs> so, Morgan, I'm going to bring this up a little closer here to you. And you want to sit in my chair, Mary Janet? Okay, okay, I will for a minute. Here we go. So can we can we get this down here for us? Now. Yeah. I'm somebody that doesn't know anything about the Mi'kmaq people. What could you tell me to explain where they came from? What, 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 what can you tell me that you're so proud of? What I'm really proud of to be, I'm really proud to be Mi'kmaq because the music, you know, this is a huge part of who we are, you know? Music. Music. And you hear music in every community. There's a lot of musicians across the Mi'kmaq Nation that are musicians, right. but uh, very few that play the fiddle. So, really? Yeah. Really? Now the numbers are climbing up now. You yes. Know, but we all look up to, you know, Lee Cremo. Oh. Yeah. So, I knew Lee. He did. I knew Lee very well. Well, I don't know if you know this, but I used to teach dancing and perform step dancing with, in concerts and stuff, so I would always run into Lee, and mm -hmm. my last memory is of him. Him and I, we were walking from the Broad Cove concert stage, walking um, over to uh, another building, and just, ah, oh, he, he was just incredible, yeah. an incredible musician. So the Mi'kmaq people, then, are they, they're all of Atlantic Canada. Are they into Quebec as well? I'm not too sure if they're into Quebec. There might be a few. I know my cousin lives up in Quebec. Yes. But we're mostly down here. Yeah, yeah, this is where you settled. The Brunswick and the Nova right. Scotia, yeah. And so when you're talking the music, so there's some who uh, have embraced the fiddle. Mm -hmm. Have they a any of them embraced the the dancing, like kind of uh, similar to our step dancing? Because I remember in Celtic Colors, a few years ago, there was a group of dancers from Alberta mm -hmm. that came, and they played fiddle. But I don't know uh, what... Uh, yeah. Were they Cree? I really don't know, but they, they were dancing on the show. Oh, I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah. like step dancing. It's like step dancing. And then they have like almost like a square set yeah. routine as uh -huh. well. Yeah. And very very Jigen. good. Jigging. Jigging. Is that what they call it? Jigging. Really? Yeah. And in, um, the tune that we're going to play after this is a tune that people jig to. The jig to. When you say jig to, you mean dance. Dance. Yeah. So and that kind of threw me off too. Yes. It's so the... Because yeah. there's the tune jig, the and tune jig. Mama, who raised me, she used to jig the tunes. Yeah. And that was uh, mouth music, you know? She would, something like, that's how she, she knew all the tunes. And uh, as you know, her granddaughter is Natalie mm -hmm. McMaster. And so there's lots of music. Like you say, in your people, there's lots of music. And they sing. Lots of native, uh, their native tongue Mi'kmaq yeah. uh, songs. And you're going to sing something today for us? I think you? so, yeah. Yeah, we can do take a, a little chance. Yeah. So, uh, so how many communities of Mi'kmaq are there in our, in, even in Cape Breton? Is I, there four or five? I could be wrong, but I believe there's seven. Seven? In Cape Breton, yeah. Okay. I could be I'm missing the community, but it's around there. So there's Wakeva, Wagmacook, uh, Member 2, Chapel Island. Yeah. Uh, what's the proper name for Chapel Island? Uh, Budladek. Budladek, okay. Budladek. And Eskasoni. Eskasoni. How much okay. you got there now? That's five. five. Uh, uh, maybe it is five. Maybe it's five. I don't want to say that, though. I might be missing a few communities. No. Is that every, it's five? It's five. 
That is five. Yeah. There you go. Like, this girl knows everything, yeah. doesn't she? <laughs> <laughs> so do they have any MIGMA studies at Cape Breton University? Do they incorporate that? Yeah. And they do? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, I took MIGMA studies at CBU. And who was teaching? Uh, my cousin, uh, they call her Step. Step Joe was one of the professors there that came in and taught. And um, a big one that we have is uh, Stephen Augustine. You know Stephen Augustine? No. So he was one. He teaches a few classes up there. Is well. that right? Yeah. Okay. And so what would he just talk about the culture that you have mm -hmm. and uh, the history? Pretty much the history. Okay. He's big on history. He knows everything. So have, did you learn a lot of stuff there that you didn't know about exactly. your own culture? Yeah, which right. is interesting to see. Oh my God, yeah. I would imagine. What about that girl that sang the Paul McCartney song? Where was she from? Emma Stevens, she's from Mescasoni. She's from Mescasoni, yeah. and that was that was amazing. Mm -hmm. And she actually got to sing with uh, Paul McCartney, did she not? I believe so, or uh, I think what she told me, I could be wrong on this, but um, she went to a Paul McCartney concert. No, I'm not wrong. So she went to a Paul McCartney concert, and Paul McCartney found the YouTube video, and he mentioned that someone in the Mi'kmaq Nation did a cover of Blackbird. Yes. And it was Emma. So yes. I think afterwards the concert, after the concert, she got to meet Paul McCartney and take pictures with him. Isn't that something? Did yeah. she sing? Get the chance to sing with him? I don't think so. No. no. Okay. If if you ever get a chance to look that up, it's it's amazing. She's a beautiful, beautiful singer. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very very. What else would you like to share with us? Anything, or would you just uh, rather? Is is there? Uh, that's something that I was going to ask you. Was there? Is there? Is your language in in the written form, or is it whatever that is hieroglyphics or whatever? Do you know that? We have it's written form. It is. Yeah. In an alf a regular alphabet. alphabet, same as not as just, we use. No, there's a few letters missing. Some from, similar to yeah. Gaelic. Yeah. The Gaelic language. There's a few uh, letters missing as mm -hmm. well in their alphabet. Interesting. Yeah. Okay then. If you have nothing else to add, well, let's get back to the music. All right. Sound good to you? Sounds good. How are you doing, Mom? I hope you're doing good over there in Sydney. God yeah. bless her. Inverness. She's in Inverness Hospital. Yeah. Oh, okay. Hi Mom. there. Aw. God love <laughs> She's her. She's proud. I'm sure she is. Okay, we'll get you guys to come back here. <laughs> you could have had a bite of that pancake. Oh, no, I was nibbling. I was nibbling. <laughs> you should have. Good custard. Custard. I'm going to have to watch this episode back to learn how to make custard. It's so easy. It's so easy. Does anybody there want a cup of tea? Oh, I love a cup of tea. Do you I... take just milk in it? Ooh. Huh? What are you taking? Uh, tea? Milk and sugar. Milk and sugar. And what, a teaspoon of sugar? Uh, two teaspoons. Two teaspoons. You're not very sweet, are you? No, just don't tell my mom. You need to ingest some. Don't tell my mom. Don't tell my mom. Tea. <laughs> How about you, Brett? Uh, I could just use another glass of water. Glass of water? Mary, Mary, Mary. Oh, I'll take tea if there's tea on. With, uh, With a little milk? With a little milk? Okay, can, can you see everybody? Well, keep me awake. Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Can, see us? can you see Bradley? Maybe get yeah. him to scooch over okay, a little come, bit. Come over here. Glass Don't be room. afraid of Morgan. <laughs> 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 How's that? Can you all see one another? Yeah. In there? Okay. All right. I think I'll bring the camera up just a little tad. Bring it up? Yeah. I'm taller. They're perfect. Great. Perfect? Yeah. Okay. A cup of tea sounds good. <laughs> All right. Ready? You notice them? Uh, you got the shaker? Is it the Red River Jig we're doing? Uh, oh, yeah. The Red River. Oh, yeah. We're talking about jigging. This is the Red River Jig. In Quebec, they call it La Grande Jig Saint. It was like that word. That's why I, I'm like, jig, jig, because in... Quebec, the French words for step dance is gig, gigay. It's like it's a verb. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Sorry. <laughs> hey, let's do this. <laughs> Better for jig.
seating. <laughs> Here we go. Back row seats. No, <laughs> front row, back row. Thank wow. you for the tea. That's good tea. Is that good tea? That's, That's good tea. Amazing. And do you like that cup? That's one of Colton McDonald's mugs that he makes. Wow. Cape Breton cups. And actually, the one you're drinking out of is also one of Colton's cups. There's, wow. Uh, it's really nice. nice. Work. Beautiful. He still makes cups? He still makes the cups. I'm going to get a hold of him. Yeah. He, he's from here in Port Hood. Yeah. And uh, he probably comes home there every weekend, but it's called cbmugs at gmail.com. Cape Breton mugs. CB mugs. CB mugs. But he makes bowls and, yeah, beautiful stuff. Oh. Anyway. So you want to try that, uh, the fun little thing? The fun little thing. Can you order the fun little thing? What is that? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the one we're doing downstairs? What do you speak of? <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. Was it with Mom's chair? No, no, that, that's coming. Which one was it? Hmm? What was it? Ron has one. Let's do it. Let's See, do this, is, this is a tune that Morgan composed in honor of someone special. Yeah, my girlfriend. Mariah. 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 <laughs> okay. And just, and just composed it two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, yeah. And it goes from slow into fast. It's the same tune? Same tune, yeah. Same tune. I love that. So is it called, what's it called, Mariah's lullaby? No. No, that's, no, that's uh, for the baby. That's for the baby. Um, <laughs> we need to know. Um, I think I call it first Mariah Chandler's Melody. Oh, that's nice. That's nice, eh? That's nice. Yeah. Let's give it a go. No, no cake in my mouth. What? I got no cake in my mouth. Right, take your time. <laughs> the oat cake, you have to chew the oat cake to the rhythm of the tune. <laughs> <laughs> Sample of it and put it Crunchy. in the recording. Crunching, yeah. They're very good. Oh, thank you, thank you. They're <laughs> they're having an oat cake, but you guys already know how to make oat cakes. We did that already. But I always have some in. Have to go back and watch that episode too. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh, they are good. Huh? They, they Exceptional. <laughs> Thank you.
better than before. That's awesome. That's incredible. That's just beautiful. Thank you. That's beautiful. That's from Look at all the hurts. Thanks for all those hurts. Wow. Oh my gosh. That's pretty wicked. Wow. <laughs> you know, I was laughing when you when you guys were playing. You know, and you're you're all stomping your feet, and and all the plants were just shaking in time. I noticed that too. Plants <laughs> love music too. And they do. Yeah. I think they really do. I I wanted to tell you something about that, and I might have told the people on here before, but many years ago, I think it was it was in the '90s anyway, and. Um, I was teaching step dancing down in California at this Valley of the Moon Scottish Fiddling School, Alistair Fraser. Yeah. And the, the way they do it is you, you gather in Berkeley, I think it was Berkeley, uh, uh, in part of San Francisco, first, before you went for the week into the, the Redwoods. And that year, Ashley McIsey came down with us. It was Buddy McMaster and myself, and I can't remember... Might have been Dave McIsaac or Jerry Holland. I'm not sure who came with us that year, but representing Cape Breton. Mm -hmm. And but Ashley came as a student, even though he was already uh, quite a player around here. And uh, opening night, before you went into the Redwoods, you uh, all the tutors put a concert on uh, in San Francisco first. It's a kickoff for the concert, and then the next day we left. But anyway. Ashley, because he couldn't play, because he wasn't a tutor, had to sit. He sat in the audience. I think he sat in the second row. And you know, all, all of the fiddlers that you know, you're, you're all pounding your foot, right? And Ashley was pounding his foot. He, he, he got in trouble for pounding his foot on the floor while he was listening to the music being played because down there in that particular group of, of, the, of the audience were listeners. Okay. They yeah. didn't want to hear a sound. Mm -hmm. And they had no idea who Ashley was, of course. But uh, anyway, it was just so comical because you never thought of that. He came up to me during intermission and said, um, I got into trouble oh, for no. pounding my foot. But uh, that's that goes hand in hand with the music that is mm. being played, isn't it? You, you mm. can't imagine somebody mm. playing fiddle and not keeping time mm -hmm. with their foot, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I went to a summer camp in Anaganish when Ashley was there when I was a little kid. And uh, he would forget his fiddle a lot. And he'd be coming <laughs> back into Gaelic class to get his fiddle. Oh, <laughs> It was a very brief camp they had in yeah. the one summer. But I just that was the first time I met Ashley, I guess. Oh my gosh. I was probably 10 and he was probably, I don't know, whatever, how many years older than me. He's, he's an amazing fiddle player. Amazing. And um, you, pl you played with Ashley mm -hmm. uh, at, at Celtic Colors, right? And just this past fall, of course, it was all online. And I know there's a lot of people out there that joined the online uh, Celtic Colors this year. Yeah. And they really, really liked it. So uh, how was that to play with Ashley? It felt like a dream, I think. Uh, yeah, because um, I found out from Don and Margie maybe like maybe three months before Felt the Colors. Yes. And I was at work. And I didn't know Ash, I had a feeling he was coming, but I didn't think I was going to be playing alongside. I found that out like the day before. Oh my gosh. Because we met up, remember we, had, we all had practice, like last minute practice at Steve McIntyre's house. Yeah. That's when I met Ashley. Is that yeah. right? That's amazing. Oh, he he is. He's he's great. Yeah. Amazing mm -hmm. fiddler. How's the tea? Oh, the tea is really good. Yeah, really good tea. Good yeah. stuff. Yeah. And how was the gold? The oat cake? You like the oat cake? Love them. <laughs> how do you do it all? There's more. There's more. <laughs> <laughs> more where that came from. You can't, ha you can't have a visit without a cup of tea. This is That's right. You know? Absolutely. And true. a little goodie. I don't know if this works here, but in um, like in my community, yes. if someone makes a tea, you're not allowed to leave unless that cup is all empty. Oh, I love that. Yeah. No, we, w well, it happens anyway, yeah. but I like that it's a, a little yeah. custom that you have. That's yeah, a rule. Big rule. <laughs> they get, they get <laughs> mad at this half of tea in there. <laughs> We can try that out all by now. Yeah. Yeah. So my friend Wendell White, his uh, his friend had a baby, 
and his name is Samuel. And someone came to do a photo shoot with Samuel. And um, really nice pictures. Happy baby. So uh, we were all inspired to make this tune for him. This is called Samuel's Lullaby. I could feel the baby rocking over uh, here. <laughs> That's lucky Samuel. Mm -hmm. Who is Samuel to you now? Just your friend's son? Um, it would be my friend's friend's son. Son, okay. Yeah. Nice, nice. But yeah, our mutual friend Wendell uh, is from Managinish mm -hmm. County, Bayfield. Bayfield. Shout out to anyone watching from Managinish County. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that was fun. Thanks for having me. Oh my gosh, that was beautiful. I hope that before you leave, if this is your final number, that you will sing in your native tongue before we sign off. Sounds Please. like a plan. We can do uh, the fun one. You know the fun one with the thing? So basically what oh. happens is when, if it's your final number and as you're nearing the oh, end of the number yes. I'll, I'll, uh, okay. I'll, I'll want you to continue playing and I'll say goodbye to everybody mm -hmm. over in the kitchen. But, uh, Could you want a name? I'm gonna, I'm gonna sneak up mm -hmm. right and then now. We can do, um, okay. We can do the Jake thing. Thanks Mary okay, Jane. Yeah. That works, eh? It's an A. Told you what, then uh, the Jake thing. Yeah. Then the real thing. Mm -hmm.
just beautiful music and thanks to Morgan and Bradley and Mary Beth for an amazing afternoon and a little bit of the Mi'kmaq culture some how do you say hello in Mi'kmaq? Morgan just has his mouth is full of the oat cake. Gway. <laughs> Gway. 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 There. Mary Jane will play the shaker with us. <laughs> So people, next week is Easter Sunday, and I am just going to make a raisin pie. Raisin pie is something we do love, and I'm not going to have any entertainment because it's Easter. I don't know if Kelly's going to stay on Sunday or not. Uh, with Rosie and with Michael. 
We'll see. Maybe she'll sing a song. But before I go, I want to wish a very happy birthday to Kelly's uh, mother-in-law, although she's not married yet, but their mother-in-law, Marie Parker. Happy, happy birthday, Marie. And, uh... Anyway, I love you guys. Have a wonderful week. Have a wonderful Easter week. And uh, just know that I love you so much. You've made a great difference in my life. And uh, I just want you to know that you really matter to me. And always email me if you're having a bad day. And I will get back to you and uh, love one another. Bye-bye, everybody.